Welcome viewers to the Saturday, March 4th edition of To Wait For News. I am Jacka Wooding bringing you our top stories from this week. Thank you so much for joining us. We begin today's coverage with news that the BVI Football Association's Women Committee has honored Cassandra Coach Cass Gregg for her 30 years of unwavering commitment and dedication to empowering the development of football in the British Virgin Islands. Coach Cass was taken by total surprise when she was presented with a banner and plaque honoring her work during the Women's Football Festival on Saturday, February 25th. Our team was on the ground and captured these moments. What if we start by honoring her today? Instead of next week. Yeah. Huh? Cass, come here, man. Come, 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 come. Today, we want to unveil this little banner in recognition of Coach Cass. We wanted all the girls there. Additionally, this, uh, this is just a miniature version. What is actually going to happen, we are going to have a billboard in town unveiled on Monday. For Coach Cass. We want to give Coach Cass this plaque. Don't cry, don't cry, Coach Cass. Please. A word of appreciation presented to Cassandra Coach Cass Gregg by the BVI Football Association Women's Committee on this 25th day of February 2023 for your 30 years of unwavering commitment and dedication to empowering and developing football in the BVI. Congratulations. After that presentation, she told our team that she was taken by total surprise and is grateful to be recognized by her peers. At first, I was like a bit nervous uh, like, because I didn't really know what to expect. And I know those sneaky, those sneaky um, executive, um, not the executive, yeah, the, ex the women executive body, those sneaky, they were planning something because... The first one to reveal my boat, it was um, Mrs. Mohammed. I'm going to call your name. And I wasn't, <laughs> I really don't like people know about my boat. But today, after it's soaking, you know, I, it just lift my spirit. Well, this morning, actually, my spirit was really down, especially when I saw the weather, knowing that I was expecting at least 75 ladies out here today. But because of the weather, they hold it down a bit. But today, it turned out to be a great day for me. And I do appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. I've never been in that tense situation before today. <laughs> On the heels of this milestone, Coach Cash says she is eyeing great things for women's football, including seeing through her growing team in regional tournaments by next year. I'm looking at every CFU, CONCACAF tournament by next year, if they're having a U15, by next year, i pretty much sure I can get these girls to that CFU tournament if they have one in Santa Domingo next year because they normally do, like every two years they have someone. But hopefully, that's the first one I'm looking forward to. But other, I'm looking for like little competition, uh, you know, between like probably St. Thomas, probably Anguilla, the close by countries, just to give them, you know, a boost before they can enter any big tournament. Coach Cash says she does not believe that the women's team will be limited at all in what is stereotyped as a male-dominated sport, as women continue to excel across the board, even surpassing their male counterparts. Today, they are pilots, men, women. They are builders, men, women. So in every sport, they're men and women. And I'm going to prove to them that these girls, once they continue, their level is going to be right up there. And we're going to reach places where the men have never been before. In other news, one VI poker run on Friday made a $10,500 donation to the Ivan Dawson Primary School. More in this report. VI 
Pokharan has made a major contribution valued at $10,500 aimed at bettering the student and teacher experience at the Ivan Dawson Primary School. The One VI Pokharan Give Back Ceremony was held at the school's campus in Cane Garden Bay on Friday, March 3rd. There, the Pokharan team, led by Pastor Dr. Michael Turnbull, presented the proceeds of last year's Pokharan event to the school's staff and students. So we want to present a check, and this check is is cumulative. We have, as you see, one of the computers out on this plate. We gave back to this school 20 uh, computers, brand new, and laptops, so kids that come to the school and teachers will continue to be able to use and make sure we use full steam ahead. Yes. Uh, so we're grateful for also the ministry for allowing us to have this partnership with them. So we have given back 20 computers um, and we made sure we painted the room, made sure the room was fixed. Uh, we also developed a reading nook that you'll see in that classroom. And we also donated a smart teaching TV that has integrated for web conferencing, teaching online, and meetings. Uh, so we're just so grateful to make sure we make a difference in our community. So we want to say thank you so on behalf of One VI Poker Run and to the school. We donate um, all of these things totaling a total of ten thousand. <laughs> The donation consisted of a newly outfitted classroom, which was repainted and had repairs done to its roof, with assistance from the RDA to address a leaking issue. The room was stocked with 20 laptop computers for students and teacher use, a smart teaching TV, and a new air conditioning unit. An area of the room was also designated as a reading nook to encourage reading in students. Dr. Mike said that the Poker Run team is thankful to be able to make such a valuable contribution to the community, and extended thanks to all the sponsors and collaborators, including CCT and Stuart for Media, for partnering on this initiative. Uh, we are just so grateful. When we started on One VI Poker Run, we destined that all of the profits and everything that we do will go back to schools. We chose two schools. The first one was in Scotland, where we gave back $9,500 worth of stuff to the school. And our community who's here, some of the members who's, who are here today, and those who are supporting, and our sponsors, we just want to say thank you. Our major sponsors for this event was 1284 Media and CCT, Nagico, Caribbean Sellers, Paradise Club and Lounge, which is here in King Garden Bay, which was our first spot, and it would have been possible without them. We want to give thanks to all the government officials, and especially Honorable Melvin Mitch Turnbull, who is the Minister of Natural Resources and Labor, a lot of use of the beach. And we want to thank you and the community for what we've been able to do. So we the Poker Run team is aiming to complete similar projects at another two schools throughout this year. For 2 it 4 News, I am Jacques Wooding. And with that, we take a quick word from our sponsors. Stay with us because there's more when we return. There are many ways to enjoy life, like so many ways to count on popular. One. Uh, yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. My name is Kamal Haynes. Most of you know me from 284 News, but now you get to see me in a different light on my very own show called Health is Well. We have Joel Turnbull. I don't want you to arch your back when you're pulling down. Milton McLean. First of all, right, your, your footwork. Stephen Payne. That was a 9 to 10. I know you got the service down back. Steve Augustine. You did a pretty hard workout today, so perhaps... And as you can see, it's actually... <laughs> you're feeling it. Lonzo Boynes. Taekwondo. Adam Morrells. I'll speak as if you're an absolute beginner. I uh, am an absolute beginner. You are an absolute beginner. And Seth Graham. It bites. It will bite. Be <laughs> <laughs> get your water, get your fruits and veggies and experience a wealth of knowledge about getting healthy. Mm. Is that my lunch? Hmm? Is that my lunch? Mm -mm. We 
you're like the coworker that doesn't eat your lunch. I'm John. I'm John. CG Insurance. Good like that. Welcome back and thank you so much for staying with us. An audit into assistant grants programs operated by the government of the Virgin Islands has led the chief audit executive to conclude that, quote, the operations of these programs, for the most part, did not serve to resolve any socioeconomic deficiencies in our communities, as the programs were largely utilized to satisfy individual wants and desires, end quote. This was one of the conclusions presented in a document entitled Assistant Grants January 2019 to May 2022 Audit Report, which detailed an audit conducted by the Internal Audit Department in association with the Office of the Auditor General. More in this report. Within the scope of this audit, the government of the Virgin Islands awarded a total of $22,939,333.07 in assistant grants across three ministries, that is, the Ministry of Communications and Works, the Ministry of Education, and the Premier's Office, as well as the House of Assembly. According to that document, auditors found that the assistant grants programs lacked the basic tenets of good governance, such as accountability, equity, and transparency. The audit said all the programs lacked clearly defined policy objectives and rules that would guide their functioning. These programs operated outside of any financial rules for public expenditure, on the belief that elected members exercised unconstrained authority over these funds. End quote. The audit was conducted in accordance with Recommendation B-12 of the Commission of Inquiry Report. It sought to achieve the following objectives. 1. Assess the level of due diligence conducted in awarding the grants and determine whether the grants were awarded with transparent and equitable process. 2. To determine whether there was any abuse of discretionary authority in awarding grants. And 3. To determine whether grants programs were abused by applicants across programs. While it was acknowledged that there is some validity in the argument that elected officials are, quote, more in tune with the needs of their constituency, end quote, and there would require some level of operation at this level across the programs, auditors concluded that this knowledge would be better utilized to inform and formulate policy to meet those needs in a holistic and transparent manner. The report further stated, quote, when public funds are expended based on the most opaque of circumstances, discretionary decisions of political operative, without rules and limits, and without consequence. It is near impossible to separate political and intrinsic motives. A final assessment found that there was an absence of due diligence in awarding grants under these programs, and the process used was neither transparent nor equitable. Auditors stated that there were indications of abuse of this discretionary authority in awarding grants based on best practice, as well as abuse by applicants who utilized those deficiencies in the process for self-benefit. The report stated these programs, as were operated, were affront to good governance and an abuse of the public purse. For Tweet for News, I am Jacka Wing. The Office of the Auditor General has reported that requests were made for the government to submit any evidence to show that the static marine platforms supplied by Easy Shipping were used beyond the 25th of November 2020. However, no such evidence was received up to the point of completing the audit into that matter. The audit report further found that despite all three contracts with Easy Shipping providing for the agreements to be terminated by either party by giving 48 hours written notice of termination or two days remuneration in absence of notice, this was not done. In a document entitled Report of the Auditor General on the COVID-19 Border Security Contracts for Static Marine Platforms, COI R23, the Office of the Auditor General detailed its findings surrounding those contracts. That included a conclusion that payments made to Easy Shipping covered two months when the barges were not used, while incorrect information was provided to the NSC and Cabinet to facilitate approval of the contracts and support unearned payments of more than $7,000. The report claims that in correspondence to then-Financial Secretary Jeremiah Frett on March 26, 2021, Commissioner of Customs Wade Smith asserted that the barges were used from September 2020 to January 2021. The report added that in that same correspondence, Mr. Smith refused to sign the certificate on the payment voucher to confirm that the barges were used during the period 23rd December to 22nd January for the last contract. 
The report supports assertions that the vessels were not in use after November 25th by exploring customs mobile vessel logs and platforms logs. It said the platform logs and custom staffing schedules show that the use of all three barges was discontinued in November 2020 on dates as follows, November 15, 2020, November 21, 2020, and November 25, 2020. The mobile vessel logs show that no officers were transported to the platforms after the dates indicated. Further, the supervising officer for the barges is said to have confirmed that no roster was prepared for the barges after November 25th and no officers were assigned. Despite this abrupt stop, auditors were unable to find any information on why the use of the barges ceased or any instruction for the discontinuance. The report says that while platform logs confirm that the barges were used for the full period of the first contract, this was not the case for subsequent contracts, which were also paid in full. Auditors found no correspondence on file between Commissioner of Customs, the barge owners, or the financial secretary regarding the extension of the service beyond the first contract. Despite that, use continued for about another month beyond the contract period. The report states that more than a month after the use of the barges stopped, the Premier at the time, Andrew Foy, submitted a paper to Cabinet requesting that a contract be issued to Easy Shipping for the period 23rd October to 22nd December 2020. The report outlined the following. The paper stated that the platforms have and continued to function as strategic outpost locations from which Her Majesty's Customs or Royal Virgin Islands Police Force Marine vessels are rapidly deployed to intercept suspicious maritime activity, but this was not the case. The period in question included four weeks when the barges were not used. Nonetheless, a full payment of $840,000 was made under the second contract. Auditors found the third contract for the period 23rd December 2020 to 22nd January 2021 of particular concern. The report stated, quote, The information paper to continue easy shipping services was sent by the Premier for approval to the NSC on February 10, 2021 and to Cabinet on February 15, 2021, almost three months after JTF stopped using the barges. The cabinet paper contained the same incorrect narrative that the platforms were in use and vessels were being launched therefrom. Auditors say that this paper was submitted without any accompanying report from Customs or the JTF requesting the continued use of the barges, and no correspondence to or from Easy Shipping regarding a change in terms. Notwithstanding, the contract was approved for the payment of $360,000 in full for use of the barges, which had long been abandoned. The report stated, quote, The continuation of easy shipping services under two additional contracts occurred without any formal request or report on the functioning of the platforms from the JTF. The information papers submitted to NSC and Cabinet contained the same misinformation regarding the service. They claimed that the platforms were being used by customs and police to launch vessels. This was not the case, and more significantly, that the platforms were in use from December 2020 to January 2021 when they were not. This led to contracts and payments for a service that was not received. For To It For News, I am Jacka Wooding. And with that, we take a quick commercial break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> mm, there are many ways to enjoy life. Like so many ways to count on popular. Yeah, eh, eh, eh. Father Jesus, that learn you along like church souls. Hmm. Customer line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come. Yes, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Boy. Good morning. You must have cut fun tapping. It's okay, it's okay. I'll take care of it. What? No, no man, take care of me. How may I assist you? Yes, yes. You want a top of power? Eh? You want a top of power? Eh? 
Oh, top of four. Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top up promotions, more savings with hero bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top Up Turn Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT Top Up is sold and top up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want top of power. Eh? Is someone gonna get that? Hello. Hello. I, I, so nice of you to have clean up for us. Hi, baby. Hi. We're like in-laws that don't show up unannounced. Don't worry, I've got this. CG Insurance. Good like that. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. The British Virgin Islands women's softball team defeated St. Martin on Thursday to make it two wins from two games in the 2023 Eastern Caribbean Amateur Softball Confederation Championship in St. John USVI. Kamal Haynes has more. The BVI women delivered another sensational performance on Thursday, winning via Mercy Rule in the fourth inning, 11 runs to St. Martin's Warner. Jalissa Shelley Potter was named as the player of the match by the USVI for her four at-bats, one run, three hits, and two runs batted in. So I didn't feel as strong in my hitting, so today I decided I'm going to come out and I'm going to swing, I'm going to put my all in it, and just like that I went four for four, so I feel pretty confident about today. And obviously the team... Mercy rule again. Speak about how it feels to be dominating in the first two games. Like I said, um, we huddled as a team and I said, listen, not because we view the team and we don't think of them as a stronger team, we're not going to underestimate them. We're going to come out strong. We're going to hit first. We're going to start first. We're going to lash first. And then we're going to protect. And that's what we did. Tomorrow, a double header must be tough against two top teams. What's the uh, mindset going into tomorrow's game? Tomorrow we're just going to play our game, we're going to, we have a, a strategy in our uh, playbook, we won't you know, say it now, but we do have a strategy how we're going to handle that, and we're going to play our game and we're going to win both of them, that's the plan. Well, also performing exceptionally was pitcher Javelin Frett, who was voted player of the match by the BVI team for her precise pitching and for staying in the game despite suffering an injury to her leg. My coach and catcher, we, we decided to go with simple pitches, rise, drop, um, curve, um, fast, fast in, fast out, screw ball, curve ball, and off speed. I did about six different pitches, which were called very well for me. But my inside pitches, I still have to work a lot on kind of saying I'm still on the inside. Um, I've, I, I'm not sure how many strikeouts I've got, um, but I feel like my catcher and I work very well on this game. Um, in the end, we were victorious, and I love that my team had my back in the end. So I didn't have to kill out my whole arm, and we walked together perfect. Fred also provided some details on the extent of her injury. Yeah, I pitched an inside fastball, and it came back directly low. I attempted to catch it, but it, I was too late, and it hit the inside of my knee on the bone. So right now, I'm icing. Um, my teammates had me all the way. They were encouraging. Once I got hit, they were asking me to walk around and they were asking me to stretch it out, but they were also asking me to push through it. So I had to hold the tears back, I had to hold the pain back. And I, I, I thank my teammates a lot because if they wasn't um, behind of me, I would have given up one time. Well, meanwhile, assistant coach Shomori Robinson spoke on the team's performance and commended the girls for their second victory of the tournament. The girls come out to play. Um, they hit, they play um, defense, the pitching was amazing. Show a lot of strikes and the defense just feel behind of her. She did an amazing job pitching today. So congratulations to Javelin and we're ready for game three. Speak about some of the good things you saw in the last two games and some of the stuff that needs to be worked on for game three. A good stuff I saw, the girls were on a lot of communication, being aggressive and they swing their sticks. What about some of the stuff that needs to be worked on for game three? Um, they just need to stick with the process and the results are going to show. Reporting for Twit4 News, I am Kamal Haynes. The beauty and diversity of dive sites across the territory's waters has been highlighted and rated among the best in the world. This is according to a review by deputy editor at Scubaverse Media, Caroline Robertson-Brown, who traveled to the territory to take part in BVI Rec Week 2023. 
As a photojournalist, Brown said she was left speechless by the numerous breathtaking dive sites she visited during her week-long stay. I have to say, uh, my husband and I have dived all over the Caribbean. And when we got here straight away, I think the first thing was all of the dive centers were so welcoming. Everyone they've met has really been welcoming. And then as soon as you we went underwater, we were just blown away by the diversity of dive sites, the marine life you've got here, and the wrecks are just amazing. Robertson Brown said that the dive sites in the BVI from her observation and experience are among the top sites in the region. I think the BVI isn't necessarily listed as one of the top dive destinations, but having dived it all of this week, you know, we've dived all over the Caribbean and it's right up there. It is, it's easily up there with Cayman Islands, Dominica, all of those other islands that you normally hear about for diving. The Rhone, the wreck of the Rhone, it's a world-class dive site. It's world-class, not just Caribbean class. And obviously a week of uh, activity, a week of pictures. What's next for you now as it relates to that information, that documentation you would have done over the past week? Where does that go now? Sure. So first of all, we'll get back and we'll start editing our images, editing our video, getting all of that sorted. And then what will happen is we'll do a series of blogs on scubaverse.com. And then it will be in the summer issue of Dive Travel Adventures magazine, which is a magazine that goes out to 10,000 divers in the UK. It's a free magazine. Uh, and so lots of people, will, it's going to be a 10 page feature. So it's going to be a big feature in the magazine. Everyone's going to read about the adventures that we've had. Meanwhile, Director of Tourism Clive McCoy said the Tours Board will be doing more in promoting the BVI as a dive destination. Producers came to us and told us uh, earlier, late last year, that they wanted to do this event. And um, as you know, um, diving is one of it's here in the British Virgin Islands. Uh, we're known to be the best wreck diving destination in the entire Caribbean. So we jumped on board. We uh, facilitated um, with some funds <laughs> to help them out with in terms of um, um, some cleanup campaigns that they wanted to do, bringing in some journalists and so forth, promoting the event. Uh, and from what I gathered, the divers that have came in for the event have noted how wonderful the diving is here in the British Virgin Islands. They are telling us that the diving here is competitive across the region. Now I knew we were competitive, but I, to see how their eyes lit up about it, it lets us know that we need to put a little bit more effort into um, promoting the sector a little bit more so we can make this event bigger. And um, if, we can, um, if we can actually try to tie it into the off-peak season so we can stymie that, that's a great way for us to keep uh, generating money into the, um, the, the, the economy. McCoy said that he is hopeful that by further promoting the BVI's dive product, that it will help to create activity in the periods outside of the usual tourist season. We're doing various events across the globe, in uh, the UK, as well as in uh, the United States of America, um, to promote diving in the destination, especially our wreck diving. Um, uh, uh, most people know, you know here in the BVI, our, our, peak, our off peak season starts in June and goes all the way down into to November. One of the things that we're trying to do is stymie that off-peak season. We don't want no off-peak season in BVI. We want people coming all the time to the destination. And this is a good opportunity for us to do it. So uh, we're going to work a little bit closer with the BVI Scuba Association to put things together so we can get more persons here for the event. And that's it for today's News Roundup. Be sure to follow us for daily news updates at twitformedia.com and like us on Facebook at Twit for Media and Twit for BVI on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Jacka Widding and I will see you again next week. So have yourself a safe and enjoyable weekend. Goodbye. Yo, everything good, Dad? Bye. This thing got me one way, Daddy. What do you mean? Ever since I hook up with this thing, I can't eat, I can't sleep. This is the first thing I touch it when I reach home. What are you really? Hey, this thing like you, you know? Dad, this thing got me staying home, keeping out that trouble me. Wow, what's your name is? She? I talk about my CCT life. Don't worry about missing your favorite series, sports, news, and local programming. Come to CCT today and sign up for CCT Live to access over 80 channels. CCT Live, bring it home. One month free trial, turn into five. Five months turn into well. You know I huff, I watch him ball. 
I've been watching football, dog, Nickelodeon, Paw Patrol. I am hooked. Hook, I tell you.